Hello, it's me. I was wondering if after all these years you'd like to be to go over everything. They say the time supposed to heal you, but I ain't done much healing. Hello, can you hear me? I'm in California dreaming about who we used to be when we were younger and free. I've forgotten how it felt before the world fell at our feet. There's such a difference between us and the many Okay, there's your song from Adele, uh, song choice this morning. Okay, Math 15, uh, we're back at it again, and this is going to be section uh, 8.2, uh, continuing. Uh, the difference between 8.2 and 8.1, 8.1, they gave you sigma. <coughs> Excuse me. 8.1, they give you sigma. 8.2, they don't. Hmm. So if they don't give you sigma, which is more usual, in my opinion, uh, that they don't, because if they had sigma, why wouldn't they give you everything, you know, like mu, because they have all the data. So they don't give you sigma. So what do they have you? They either give you uh, the sample size, they will, let's say it was 40, which is more than enough to be assuming normal, approximately normal. So let's say sample size was 40 and you have the raw data, you could calculate the X bar, which is the average of the 40. You could also calculate the standard deviation for the 40, which would be little s. And that's what we're gonna be doing. Using the little s instead of the sigma, uh, but we have to accommodate for sampling error now. So we're gonna use a different formula, and they're called T scores instead of Z scores. Uh, so we're gonna use T's. And we're gonna use the same uh, table D uh, to take a look at that in the formula. And then in the calculator, uh, instead of a Z interval, we will scroll down a little bit further and find the T interval and do something very similar that we did before. And if we have the raw data, then, what we'll, and it's not big enough, let's say it was 20, uh, sample size was 20. Uh, then you have the raw data and we can do the, the dot plot that we just learned from a previous uh, part three in section one, 8.1. Uh, use a dot plot to see if they kind of line up and if they do, then we say we can move ahead. Okay, with that said, let's get going. And hope that your day has been going good because uh, mine has. Raining outside, uh, I'm gonna take a walk in the rain here pretty soon and hopefully you find something else that you could do as well uh, with the extra time that you might find during this uh, crazy time, this crisis that we've been going through um, with being sheltered uh, within place. All right, uh, I'm going to share my screen. Okay, there we go, that's what I want. Take a drink of coffee. Here we go. Uh, 
Okay, sigma, we don't know it. We don't know sigma. But we can continue and do what we've done if the sample size is big enough or it says normal. This would be case two and this would be case one. So what now? Um, there's a table D and we have this thing called degrees of freedom. Uh, and I'll explain that in a moment. Uh, let's see. If you're given degrees of freedom that's not given, then choose the closest one. I'll explain that as well, uh, this part later on. This formula, that's the one we would be using by hand should you um, have done this, let's say in class, and I was looking at the formula, and you have to plug everything in. I'll show you what, what the T looks like from the table. But to answer the question on the multiple choice, uh, I might ask you what the T is. I might do that. And when I say that, it's forcing you to take a look at the table. So be prepared. Okay, I'm gonna say this right now. Be prepared to use table D to uh, multiple choice, say what is the Z or the T value if I give you a confidence interval from the table. And a little reminder on a Z, I'll click this out again for a second. So for a Z uh, on, the, on the table, uh, you will find the confidence interval and you go all the way down to the bottom. Uh, that's easy for the Z. Go all the way down to the bottom and that would be the score that you would use. Uh, for a T, and I'll even get it out right now. For a T score, use the same table. Let's say you want a 95% confidence interval. Uh, the Z score is all the way down at the bottom, all the way down here, 1.960. If it's a T, you have to use what's called degrees of freedom. And it's all based on a sample size. So degrees of freedom is equal to N minus one. So if they give you the sample size of say 10, your degrees of freedom would be nine. And then you go across to where the 95% confidence interval column would be. And you would pick, it looks like 2.262. That would be your, what's called the T-score. If the sample size was 25, then subtract. If, if N is equal to 25, then the degrees of freedom is equal to 24. And you'd look at that. And then you go across to the confidence interval again. If it was 95% confident interval, then you come down and it looks like it's 2.064. That would be the T-score in this formula right here. That would be the T-score. And like uh, the other um, chapter, section 8.1, um, all of this is called the margin of error. Uh, this part here is called standard error. That's all margin of error. And you're expected to write down the formula. Well, okay, that's if we were face to face. You're not gonna write down the formula, I'm not gonna see it. You'd have it in your notes if you need it. Inserting the appropriate values. Yeah, not gonna do it. You're not gonna do it, but you just need to know what the values are if I asked you for them for multiple choice. And of course, we're gonna use our stat feature in the calculator to actually uh, grind out the answers that we did in the, uh, the Z interval that we did before. Keystrokes are found on 445 on this one. And uh, we're gonna use table D as well. And uh, T11, I think, is in your textbook. Textbook. But table D, I've got a copy of it out. Okay, let's take a look and see um, a particular problem. So the first problem that I have on the packet uh, talks about a random sample of 75 parking meters. So that means N equals 75. So we're talking about parking meters and how much money is in the parking meters. So when you go out and you collect the money. Now, nowadays, I think in Santa Rosa anyway, I live in Cloverdale, so there's no parking issues. No parking meters, no issues in Cloverdale. But in Santa Rosa, there's areas in downtown that you have to have a parking meter. Uh, I don't know if they actually uh, 
you could put in money anymore. I, I don't know. Uh, usually it's a card. Um, but in any case, if they go to the parking meter, the old fashioned ones, and the people put in coins, and the parking attendant comes out and empties a parking meter, uh, they have so much money and they count it up and they did 75 of them that way. And they added up all the money and divide by 75. This would give you 120 bucks is the X bar for the 75. So X bar is equal to $120. And notice here's the big difference, the sentence structure. Now, when I say the sentence structure, uh, look at it, it's all one sentence, all one sentence. The standard deviation that they're talking about is regards to the 75 parking meters, meaning that's S. This is S, not sigma. Now, if you go back to a previous problem in section 8.1, uh, the sentence structure would have been something like um, they would have stopped the sentence right here and put a, a, a dot right there, a period. And then they would have said something, the population standard deviation, or even if they said the standard deviation, which is a little uh, ambiguous to me, the second sentence would have implied that that would have been sigma. But because this is all in one sentence, that's my suggestion that you look at, especially on the uh, multiple choice portion of the test, which is all of it, uh, look to see if it's all embedded to one sentence. If it is, then the standard deviation is S. Okay, so is this a Z or a T? We're going to say a T. And you say because uh, sigma not given. Or you could say uh, because um, the standard deviation is for the 75 meters, which is a sample. So it's a T. If it's a sample, it's a T. Okay, find the standard error. Now, the standard error. Uh, is the T score. And that's what I'm going to show you how to find it. Find the standard error. That's not the margin of error. Margin of error is uh, a lot. Standard error is this. Uh, find uh, T sub alpha divided by two. Okay, that's what we want to find. So you have to remember, this is the thing that you forget, that with uh, samples, you're going to find uh, degrees of freedom is what you have to use, N minus one. So don't forget to write that down. And since N is 75, you're gonna go degrees of freedom is equal to 75 minus one, which is 74. And then since uh, it's a 95% confidence interval that we're looking at, then I'm gonna get the table. So I'm looking for 74 for the degrees of freedom. Looking for 74, and guess what? 74 is not there. They, they jump after 40, they jump by tens. <laughs> Even after 100, they jump by 1,000. Uh, look what happens uh, between 100 and 1,000. How much difference is uh, uh, these two numbers? Really hardly anything at all, hardly anything. Uh, it's the difference is within the third decimal. But if I look back over here, what's the difference between each one of these? there's more difference. I mean, it's a bigger gap, if you want to call it. Uh, not by much, but it's a bigger gap. And then if I look between, you know, one and two, whoa, there's a big gap right there. Big gap. So my instructions to you somewhere in your packet would have said, if you don't see 74 here, pick the one that's closest, either 70 or 80. 70 or 80. 74 is closer to 70. So that's the one I'm going to pick. So I'm going to look at this one here. I'm going to look at that. Go all the way across to the column that's 95%. The 95% column is right here. See, 95% column is right up here. There it is. 
Go all the way down, 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 and there it is. So your answer to this question is 1.994. Now, in this whole construct, <coughs> that would have been, uh, had we been face to face, you would have plugged in values for X bar. Of course, you know that, that's 120. You would have uh, gone subtract. You would have plugged in alpha divided by two. You would have plugged in right here, 1.994 right there. Okay, this is little s divided by square root of n, not sigma, little s. You would have plugged in little s, which is right there. You would have plugged in uh, 75 and then put a mu and do it all over again. X bar plus T sub alpha divided by two and so on. You would have done that for me, but since it's not face to face, I don't need to even see that. Uh, all you need to know is in your calculator, calculator, you're looking for, look for T interval in your calculator. Now your T interval then, if you're wanting to do it the shortcut method, and let me find my calculator. I don't know where that is. Well, that's interesting. It is here. That is weird. I'm looking for my calculator. Oh, I found it way over here by my book. So just like finding the Z interval, clear that out, uh, we went to stat and we found it under tests. So stat tests and then scroll down, look at, there's the Z interval. Uh, one more click, there it is, eight is the T interval. So hit enter. And this feels similar to the Z interval. Uh, if you're given raw data, which I'm not, then you would continue down here. If you're given, and you would have had to put data in your list one. If you're doing statistics, which is what I have, hit enter. And now we're gonna type in all the things that we're given, which is back up in here. We're given all this stuff. So our X bar, let's see, is 120. My little S, by the way, that looks like big S, but it's really a little S. That's the sample standard deviation is 30. Uh, our N is 75. Don't even have to put in the degrees of freedom. It knows it. The calculator uh, generates it. Um, it's embedded. And so our 95% confidence interval is there. So we hit enter and we have a parentheses. So let's see, 113.1, 113.1. This is money because this is money out of a parking meter. So put that, that means this is change, that's cents, $113.10 comma. And the next number I have is $126.90. Uh, or if you do it with the any, uh, inequality, you would have uh, $113.10 less than mu, less than $126.90. This says if you uh, went and looked at all the parking meters in Santa Rosa, for instance, all of them, you opened them all up, you counted every parking meter, you divided by all the parking, let's say there were um, 10,000 parking meters, you divide that by 10,000, then the answer for all of them is somewhere between $113.10 and $126.90. And I'm pretty sure that that'll be true. How sure? 95% sure. There's a 5% chance that I was off. So the 5% chance that it might be less than $113, or there's a 5% chance that I might be more than $127, but pretty sure. And then you'd say something like, uh, we are 95% confident, confident that the average 
amount of money um, in all parking meters is uh, between $113.10 and $126.90. A statement like that works good. Okay, uh, moving on. Now, uh, had we been in class, face to face, I would have asked all of you to respond to this question and, and I would have gathered data. Remember when we did that in class and I asked you about your favorite color and I gathered raw data? Um, that data that I gathered was qualitative or categorical. What I'm gathering right now is quantitative and uh, really that's all we can use for um, these types of problems in chapter, let's see, chapter six, seven, and eight, it's all quantitative, not qualitative. Qualitative data, that's a different kind of um, distribution. It's not normal. Anyway, let's see. I would have asked for um, distance you commute one way from home to school. Right now, your school is your home, so that should be zero. That's not very interesting. <laughs> so let's assume we were, um, I'm going to do some fake data, <laughs> pretending that you were in my class. Uh, and I'm going to collect data pretending again that you were in my class. And let's say that there were uh, 20 of you uh, in my class at the time. So I need to collect 20 responses. And they range, first person might have said 12 miles. Next one said one mile because you live real close to the campus and someone else says two miles and someone says five miles and someone else says, yeah, I agree. I live right. I live right next door to them or in the same apartment, five miles and let's say 10 miles and nine miles. Don't, I would say, don't give me 9.3 miles. We're not going to, so the nearest mile. Uh, and let's say there was a, another one mile and then there was, uh, 10 miles and seven miles and five miles. What do we got? Two, four, six, eight, 10, 11. And then we'd have six miles, uh, 12, uh, 10 miles. Someone traveled 27 miles like they lived beyond Cloverdale, um, maybe up in Hopland or something like that, uh, or maybe Novato. If, and then let's say there was, um, oh, I don't know, 18 miles. Maybe they live in uh, Casadero or on the coast. Um, and then there's 10 miles and five. How many got? Two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16. Let's say um, three miles, 17, three miles, 18, five miles, and two miles. I think that's 20. Two, four, six, eight. 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, oh, 22, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20. All right, forget that person. So <laughs> n equals uh, 20. There's 20 people. So down here, what's our sample size is 20. Uh, what's our sample mean? Well, now I'm going to uh, uh, put that in my calculator show you how to do that. What's a sample mean? You would just add them all up, divide by 20, but I'm going to put it in my list one. So hit stats, edit, get rid of that garbage from a previous problem, toggle up, hit clear, hit enter. All right, now I'm going to um, type in all this information. I'm going from left to right. So there's 12 and one and so on. Hopefully I'm not making a mistake, typing anything in. Now I'm down to the second uh, line. All 
Okay, yep, looks like there's gonna be 20 data values. Hit enter to make sure I put that in. Now, I wanna find the um, sample mean, and I can do that by hitting uh, stat again, and do over to the calculate. And one var stats, this is from the beginning of the semester where we learned that. It's been a while since we've used it. Um, okay, I like everything in list one, which I agree. Leave frequency list blank. Calculate. Okay, there's my X bar, which is 7.7. So 7.7. According to this, the class average, class average would be 7.7 um, .7 miles one way from home to school. Now, what about all students? <clears throat> Maybe SRJC is interested in all students commuting and they're looking at public transportation issues and oh, other things around that. That's why they want all of it. And, but they only took my class as, an, um, as a sample. Oh, and standard deviation is the S, not the sigma. See, it's the S right there. Standard deviation is six point, uh, let's do two decimals, uh, one eight. 6.18 um, miles. <clears throat> now, uh, for me to answer any question about this, like confidence interval, uh, I'm going to have to uh, see if we can proceed. And our sample size is uh, under 30. Okay, so um, I, I can't proceed yet unless I look at a stat plot. So I can't proceed. Okay, we've got to consider a stat plot. So reminding ourselves how to do that in your instructions, uh, wherever those are, I'll show you that again. I got the packet page somewhere. Oh, here it is. So we're gonna to go to stat plots by pressing second Y, second Y, second Y. All right, fine. And, and then, um, we're going to want to press enter because we want plot number one. Okay, enter. And we want to make sure it's turned on. See, make sure it's turned on and it is from the last time. So now I'm going down here and I want to make sure the bottom right corner plot is turned on, which it is. And list one, which it is. And X axis, which it is. And last time that I did this, uh, I had to do the box. Let's try the little dot this time. Um, sometimes the dots are a little hard to see. Um, that's why I like the box, but let's try the dot. So hit enter. And then finally, we're gonna go zoom nine right here. Finally, zoom nine. Zoom is right here. Press the digit nine. Yeah, see, those dots are kind of hard to see. I, I don't know. I don't like it. So I'm going to go back and change the dots to the little boxes. So I go back to stat plot, enter. Okay, change those stinking dots to a box. I like that better. And now I'm going to go um, zoom nine again. Zoom nine. All right. Now, if I were looking at this thing, um, I would say that it's too curvy. I'd say it, it doesn't look normal. It's too curvy. And I would not continue. And I'd be done. I'd be done. Right here. It says if we can continue, fine. So if I can't continue, so I'm not going to find that. If it turned out that it looked uh, normal enough, then you go back like we did the previous problem. You just go back and find your T interval and interpret your results. So because I can't continue based on what I just did, I'm not going to continue. All right, so I've given you um, a couple problems in 8.2 uh, that we could continue with the idea of how to set this thing up. We can continue sample size uh, and looking at the dot plot. And one of those problems that I did, I'll turn this on right here so you can see me. Uh, give you one of those problems that you could continue and you used the T interval, came up with your answer and gave a kind of a conclusion with like the parking meter one. Um, that wasn't, that was uh, sample data. 
Um, but there was an uh, earlier one in the previous section where you would have chosen, well, I haven't show you. What if you could continue? Let me go back over here and remind you how to press this, uh, these buttons. Remember, I can't continue with the data I had, but let's say you wanted to do anything with raw data and remind yourself that in your um, calculator, you've got the raw data in there already. So if you can continue, you would go stat, tests, and you're looking for the uh, T interval, which is there. Press, enter. But instead of statistics, like the parking meter, you'd have to go into the data. That's the best way of doing it. And then it's gonna grab it from list one, and then you press your 99% if that's what you want, and then you do your calculate, if you could continue. Um, what else? Oh, how about the uh, standard um, score, you know, the T-score, just for interesting, you know, for safety. Um, what's um, T sub alpha divided by two equal? Question mark. So remember we had N equals 20. So that means uh, degrees of freedom is equal to uh, N minus one, which is 20 subtract one which is 19. Uh, so then you would go to your table. You look for degrees of freedom to be 19. Uh, right here. And then let's say you wanted 99% confidence interval, which is the last column right here. And you would have written down 2.861 for me. You would have written down 2.861. If you're asked for it, that's what you do. Okay, uh, 8.2 um, lecture, um, quicker, a little quicker, um, and that's all I got. So ask questions on the day of our study sessions or give me an email, shoot me an email and if you're stuck on anything. Okay, until then, uh, enjoy, uh, just enjoy everything as much as you can. And uh, have a good day.